Imagine traveling back in time to Australia around 50,000 years ago when humans first set foot on this vast land. Back then, Australia was a wildlife paradise, home to creatures unlike any found anywhere else in the world today. We're all familiar with the African Serengeti, a vast expanse of grasslands, forests and watering holes. But did you know that every continent once had its own version of the Serengeti, teeming with giant herbivores and formidable predators? In this video, we'll explore what the Australian Serengeti once looked like, where you can still catch glimpses of it today, and what the future might hold with rewilding and megafauna introductions. First, let's travel back in time to meet the incredible animals that roamed Australia alongside the first humans and dominated the ecosystems. Among the herbivores was the massive Diprotodon, a distant relative of today's wombat, weighing up to 3,500 kg or 7,700 pounds, similar to the largest rhinos alive today. Other relatives included Zygomaturus at about 700 kg or 1,500 pounds and Nototherium, a bit smaller at around 500 kg or 1,100 pounds. And let's not forget the giant wombat, Fascolonas gigas, weighing up to 360 kg, comparable in weight to a plain zebra. These giants shared their world with the three wombat species still alive today. The largest living wombat, the critically endangered northern hairy-nosed wombat, weighs up to 40 kg or 88 pounds, about the same as a German shepherd. Australia was also home to Pelarchestes. This unusual animal was as heavy as an American bison. Once thought to have a tapir-like snout, recent evidence suggests they had prominent lips perfect for pulling leaves off trees. With long claws and unique front limbs, they likely stood on their hind legs to pull down branches, similar to the giant ground sloths of the Americas. Then there were the kangaroos and wallabies, many much larger than those we see today. The biggest, the giant short-faced kangaroo, stood up to 2.7 meters or 8 foot 10 inches tall and weighed up to 240 kg, three times the weight of the average man. The six species of kangaroo and wallaroo and the 30 or so wallaby species alive today coexisted with these giants, each filling different ecological niches. The largest living being the red kangaroo and my favorites, the rarely seen black wallaroo and the yellow-footed rock wallaby. The largest bird at that time in Australia was Newton's Thunderbird, weighing twice as much as an ostrich, the world's largest living bird, at up to 350 kg. Today, Australia is still home to two of the five largest birds in the world. The emu, which can be found across most of Australia, and the southern cassowary, which prefers jungles over savannas and is only found in the north. Now, let's talk about the predators that hunted these megafauna. First up, one of the coolest animals ever, Thylacoleo carnifex, the marsupial lion. The largest marsupial predator of all time, it weighed up to 165 kg, about the same as an African lioness. They were among the top predators on the continent. Early Australians also encountered the largest terrestrial lizard ever, Megalania, a relative of today's monitor lizards, like the Komodo dragon, which was also present in Australia at this time and likely evolved there. Megalania was an absolute giant, reaching up to 4.5 meters or 15 feet long. Today, impressive monitor lizards like the Parenti, one of the five largest lizards in the world, still roam Australia and occasionally take down adult kangaroos. Australia also had a terrestrial crocodile called Quincana, which primarily hunted on land, but potentially also in the water. The two living Australian crocodile species were also crucial predators. The saltwater crocodile, the largest reptile in the world today, remains one of the top predators in Australia, along with the smaller freshwater crocodile. Australia was also home to Monambi naricortensis, a snake thought to be almost as long as the reticulated python, the world's longest living snake. Large snakes still slither across Australia today, with the brush python, olive python and carpet python being the largest. The infamous thylacine or Tasmanian tiger roamed mainland Australia until around 3,200 years ago or even later and only went extinct in Tasmania in 1936, or did it? Many of us hope it's still hiding out there somewhere, but that's a story for another video. The Tasmanian devil also vanished from the mainland around the same time. Dingoes arrived in Australia around 3,500 years ago, and while they likely played a part in the decline of thylacines and devils, increased human activities like fire use and other hunting techniques and abrupt climate change were more significant factors according to research done in 2013. Today, cousins of the Tassie devil still live in Australia and Tasmania, the quolls, of which there are four species, the largest, the tiger quoll, 
can weigh almost 9 kg or 20 pounds, nearly twice the weight of a typical house cat. The wedge-tailed eagle, with the longest wingspan of any living eagle, thrived back then and still does today. Known to take down adult kangaroos and even hunt in groups, Australia is now home to many, many large introduced herbivores. I recently made a video discussing their impacts, both positive and negative. If you haven't seen it, I recommend watching it before continuing with this video as the information will be crucial for the last section. What are the best examples of an Australian Serengeti today? First up is Namagdi National Park, a stunning area with vast grasslands, woodlands and bogs, home to kangaroos, wallabies, emus and wombats, all hunted by dingoes and wedge-tailed eagles. Side note here, there is a documentary called Kangaroo Valley which follows a kangaroo mob in the Magdi and the dingo pack that hunts them and it is phenomenal. The Magdi also hosts other impressive predators like the heath monitor and eastern brown snake. The non-native wild boar is found there too. It spans over 106,000 hectares and it borders Kosciuszko National Park and together they form one huge ecosystem. Next, the Australian Wildlife Conservancy manages almost 13 million hectares of land. Their massive fenced areas keep out non-native animals, especially predators like feral cats and foxes, protecting Australian wildlife. Feral cats are by far the worst invasive species in Australia. Red foxes and cane toads are also very damaging. Their incredible work in creating vast protected areas and reintroducing lost species offers a glimpse of the Australian Serengeti that was before Europeans arrived. But what would it look like to recreate the Australian Serengeti that was there before the first humans impacted the ecosystems? There's much debate over what caused the extinctions in Australia. Climate change, humans, likely a mix of both. Most large scale extinctions have multiple drivers, death by a thousand cuts as the saying goes. As the climate dried and animals were struggling to adapt, they faced hunting and competition from humans who were using large wildfires and other methods to hunt and alter ecosystems. So if Australia continues its amazing conservation work and expands wilderness areas, what could we see? Of course they'd start with having areas with their full clade of native animals, kangaroos, emus, wallabies, wombats, monitor lizards, crocodiles, snakes, eagles and so on. But what about replacements for the countless giant animals they lost? Australia now hosts many non-native megafauna, some in their millions. Camels, donkeys, feral horses, feral cattle, pigs, goats, water buffalo and six species of deer. Could any of them serve as proxies for their extinct megafauna and fill their ecological roles, restoring Australian ecosystems to their full biodiversity? In my previous video I discussed the pros and cons of the introduced megafauna. There are both pros and cons, but the main issues by far are the sheer number of them their densities and the lack of predators to hunt them. So what could replace Diprotodon and the other large herbivores? There were grazers and browsers, some preferring grasslands or scrublands, and others preferring the arid regions. In modern times, rhinos might be the best replacement in grasslands and scrublands. One grazing species, like the Indian or white rhino, and one browsing species, in a perfect world, the critically endangered Sumatran rhino or the Javan rhino giving them a second home and a lifeline for their species. Rhinos, being a similar size to the lost megafauna and soft-hooved, would be a good candidate as hard hooves have shown to be damaging in Australia. For arid regions, using what they already have in donkeys and camels might be best. Camels are soft-hooved and while donkeys have hard hooves, both species are adapted to desert conditions and could fill the vacant niches the extinct herbivores left behind. More importantly, Australia needs predators while there are now plenty of large herbivores, there's a shortage of animals to hunt them. Firstly, it would be great to see Tasmanian devils introduced to different areas, to see how they cope with modern Australia. If you're as fascinated as I am with thylacine, you'll know that efforts are underway to bring them back from extinction. Both are mid-sized predators though, incapable of taking down prey larger than a wallaby. What about apex predators? How could we replace the marsupial lion and megalania? Realistically, Australia may never fully manage the millions of non-native herbivores, so could predators be introduced to help reduce the negative effects and maybe even show the benefits these megafauna have when in the right densities? To replace the marsupial lion, Thylacoleo, which was a solitary animal, three candidates come to mind. Jaguars, leopards and cougars. Jaguars prefer warm, wet environments, so they're not ideal. Leopards and cougars thrive in diverse habitats, including deserts, grasslands, forests, and even snowy regions. However, leopards often conflict with humans and are one of the only animals to actively hunt us. This makes cougars the most suitable option. 
cougars regularly hunt feral donkeys and horses in America, as well as young bison, making them prime candidates for an apex predator introduction. Although Megalania can't be fully replaced, reintroducing the Komodo dragon to Australia would be the next best thing. Ferocious predators, they regularly hunt deer, water buffalo and pigs and could do so in Australia and be an asset to the ecosystem. Of course, introducing these animals carries significant risks and would require extensive research. Such projects are a long way off if they ever happen. But can you imagine an Australia where a rhino chases a dingo pack away from her calf? Can you imagine a cougar pouncing on a kangaroo from behind a eucalyptus tree? Can you imagine the Australian Serengeti? Are there any animals you think would be more suitable for reintroduction in Australia? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to help the channel grow. Thanks for watching.